Welcome to an out of the box video. Today we're going to look at a very interesting solo game. One card dungeon. That's right. This is a dungeon crawler with 12 levels that you can play with one card. Which is, um, yeah, an amazing undertaking and very, very well done by Barney Skinner. So one, one player, ages 10 plus. I've got the, um, I backed this on Kickstarter. Um, part of the blue collection, there was like four games. Um, this was one of them, and I had the print and play, and I printed and played it. And so I printed and played the rules on um, two sided, or two, two per sheet to save some paper. But of course, the most interesting thing is the one card. So this is your dungeon. This is 12 levels of dungeon crawling. Um, and just to give you some idea of scale, this is a standard magic card. So this is just a little bit bigger than a standard magic card. Um, and I'm going to have a little bit of a talk through um, how it works. And then we're going to have a play, play, play through some levels. Um, I keep on getting killed on level two, so hopefully I'll do a bit better this time. So the way that it works is that you have... Give me something to point with. Just a second. I'm going to find a pencil. Pen. There we go. So we have our dungeon. We have our start location for the dungeon, and we have our dungeon levels. So this layout will be dungeons one, five, and nine, and you'll be fighting spiders that will have health of two. Um, they will move five, attack for four, defend for four, and have a range of three. If we complete that level, we would flip over the card, it's double-sided. And if we go to level two, so the Level 2, 6, and 10 will be Skeletons with Strength 3. Skeletons move 4, attack for 5, defend for 4, and have a range of 4. And we're basically backwards and forwards as we go through the levels. So level 3, we would have some controly thing with the help of 5 with their attributes. So each creature's attribute matches the environment. What's clever... Well, one of the things that's clever is that there's varying numbers of um, critters per level. So say we were um, level 7, we would start with two critters at this level. When we hit level 11, we're going to have three. And so the layout changes based on as we go further down the dungeon, with the idea we have to get to level 12 and vanquish um, the final creatures. So how do we represent creatures? We we need a set of dice. And so you're going to need dice for this game. Um, and you typically use red dice for dungeon residents. You'll need one dice for yourself. Three dice, four dice that represent your attributes. And three focus dice, which you throw every turn. And I'll talk about how that works in a second. And there is also um, character classes. So you can play just with no character class, or you can have a wizard, paladin, um, ranger, or barbarian, and each of these have their own special abilities. So the barbarian, once per turn, you may choose to reroll all dice when on one health. A wizard can, once per dungeon level, you can reroll all your energy dice. And so that'd be quite handy. Um, and I think I am going to play through Keep the wizard out because I think I'll play with the wizard. Um, so the game goes through four phases. You have an energy phase where you roll your energy dice. Um, then you can move and fight using your energy dice. Then creatures, monsters will move, and then monsters will attack. Um, the way that we set up the board, I'll set it up as I'm going to play. Um, I'm going to get my box my dice rolls. Um, so we're going to start with level one which is spiders. Um, we will have, because we've got two level ones, they are two health. So the dice represent their location and their health. So it's two spiders. I start with six health on the stairs. Um, when you start the game, you start with your basic attributes which are one, one, and one and then you have two for range. And so you match your, these are your attributes under the same 
values that are the, the creature of the current level, which again is a, a very neat um, way of saving space. We might move these up to get a bit more space. So when we do the energy phase, we have three energy dice. Um, we would roll these, and I'll just do this as an example, and we can allocate the dice across any order, any, any way that we see is useful, across our three main attributes, movement, attack, or defend. Our range stays constant, um, but we'll get to that. So say I wanted to do more move this round, I could throw, I could, and I wanted to attack, I would do this and then you would add up. So for that particular turn, I would have six movement, five attack, and two defense. If I was deciding that I didn't want to move and I was going to get hammered that turn, I could say, well, okay, I'll just have two movement, but I'm going to push most into my shields. So your energy roll determines what's basically going to happen. And you can um, use that accordingly. And so we go through the four phases of rolling the dice, either moving or attacking. Then the creatures will move and attack. Um, and we roll round till you either die, you get to zero health, or you kill all the creatures, in which case you flip over to the next level as you go down the dungeon and reset up and off you go. Um, when you complete a level, you've then got two choices. You can either heal back up to six hit points, um, or you can increment one of your dice. So it's like leveling up to a certain degree. So once you finish the first level, you could decide, hey, I need more range. I'd rather have three for range. Um, or you can add it to one of the other attributes, which of course um, grows your character. As you complete levels, you're basically customizing um, what happens. And that then takes out some of the randomization from your energy dice. So again, very neat mechanism for um, rolling up. The game itself for combat, um, your each movement costs you two per square, um, unless you do diagonals. If you want to go diagonals, you can, but it costs you three. And the same thing is done for combat. So if you wanted to attack, I wouldn't be able to attack this spider because it would take me two, four to attack there. I only have a range of two, so I'd literally have to be right next to it in order to attack. If, say, the spider was there and I wanted to attack diagonally, I would need a range of three. And they, the, the creatures fight with the same um, restrictions and terms. There's also a line of sight. So if, I, if you've got things in the way, so pillars or you've got creatures, um, you do a line of sight from any corner where you are to any corner where the critter is. And so if I went from this corner to there, there's a wall in the way that blocks line of sight this corner can see that corner therefore I would have line of sight would be able to attack obviously they wouldn't be able to attack me if I was there and again that's fairly easy to work out and so if I was there and I wanted to attack that critter I would need two plus three I would need five range in order to do that when you do your turn, so the second phase, after you've rolled your dice, you can split up whatever values you've got. So you can do a bit of movement and an attack, and then some more movement if you've got points left, um, and you can do multiple attacks if you've got enough. When the creatures attack you, they basically, you work out how many are in range, um, and then you add up. So if I had two in range, so if I had, if I was surrounded, um, they, that one wouldn't, They'd have to literally be like that. Maybe, maybe say, say the, the creatures were like that. Um, they would have a, a two and a three, which is well within their range. They'd both attack me for a eight. Um, and say I had six on my shields, they would attack me for eight. You basically divide eight by your shield and round down, and I'd take one point of damage. And so, if I'd had, say I'd only had a one on my shields and they attacked me for eight, um, I would divide eight by two, I would take four points of damage. And so you do have to be a little bit careful about your allocation. Of course, you do know exactly how much they're gonna move and what their range is, so you can literally work it out. 
And so that's part of the puzzle, to work out how you can get through the levels without getting too damaged, because if you can get through a level without getting damaged, um, that's really good, because it means that you um, can put it into your attributes and you don't have to heal up. Um, that kind of went longer than I thought it was going to go, as a bit of an overview. What I'm going to do now is I'll stop this video, um, actually I'll, um, and then we'll start the next video just for a playthrough, because um, people sometimes just like to look at the playthroughs. So that was kind of an overview of how one card dungeon works. Um, stay tuned for the um, next video where I'm going to play through, see how far I get. Hopefully I don't die too soon.